Hello and welcome to our GCSE History Options presentation. I'm Mrs Bailey. We obviously believe as a department that history is one of the most important subjects and the best subjects that you could study. Our quote that you may well have seen on our walls is that if you don't know history, then you don't know anything. You are a leaf that doesn't know it's part of a tree. So we do genuinely believe that in able to understand our past and also to think about how we might do things better in the future, history is an excellent GCSE to study. And it also shows your ability to argue and think critically about different topics and information. History is a really useful GCSE in terms of developing lots and lots of different skills that you can transfer into different jobs and careers. So you'll develop research skills, communication skills, you'll be able to handle and analyse data. You'll learn a lot about constructing an argument and making a judgment, how to organise information, how to problem solve. Also, the ability to question how useful information is, particularly when you look at sources and how to select evidence to help you best answer your question. So there are lots of different reasons for studying history. It teaches you how and why the world came to be as it is today. History um, asks how did things get to be this way and you can often see patterns of maybe mistakes that people have made in the past that they're still making in the future. It also deals with big issues such as racism, power, war, politics, discrimination, terrorism. It also enables you to develop the transferable skills that employers want and obviously it's very interesting and enjoyable to study. So you will study three different papers as part of your exam. So paper one is a thematic study, so it's change over time with the historic environment. So you will study this in year nine. So you've already started this topic in terms of crime and punishment. And you will look at Whitechapel as a historic environment and discover why was Jack the Ripper able to get away with um, his murders in Whitechapel and look at the conditions in Whitechapel that enabled him to remain uncaught. Paper two is two topics. So you look at a British step study. So we study Henry VIII and his ministers. So we look at Thomas Cromwell and Thomas Wolsey. And you also complete a period study. So this is Spain in the New World, 1490 to 1555. So this is all about kind of Columbus, the Aztecs, and the expansion of Spain becoming a real kind of superpower. And your final paper is paper three, which is the modern depth study. And we study Weimar and Nazi Germany. So paper one, which is crime and punishment in Britain, covers the period from 1000 AD, which is the Anglo-Saxons, right through to the present, with a specific focus on Whitechapel, which is an area of East London famous for Jack the Ripper. And you get to look at exciting stuff such as crime policing and the inner city and the reasons why they couldn't catch dear Jack. Um, if you're a fan of gore, guts and general crime and punishment, this is the, definitely the module for you. Um, it's very exciting and uh, downright fun. With paper two, we study two topics. So we study Spain in the New World, and we also study Henry VIII and his ministers. Now, Henry VIII is a fascinating topic. He's obviously kind of famous or infamous, if you like, um, due to his behaviour, due to having six wives, and due to being quite a brutal man, um, as seen by some people. I've got a couple of quotes for you. So Henry VIII was described as a neglected second son there's a vulnerability to him. He's impulsive, powerful, not a complete oaf, and wounded character. Now, lots of people believe that sort of different influences on him made him the man that he was. And we'll look into his wives. We'll look at how he ruled England. We'll look at you know what he did to become so powerful, how he broke away from the Catholic Church, and also look at the role of Thomas Wolsey, who was his first minister, and Thomas Cromwell, who was his second minister. That did help him out quite a lot. And we'll look at kind of the rise and fall of the different ministers as well. Second part of paper two is looking at Spain and the New World between 1490 and 1555. So it fits in really nicely alongside the Henry VIII unit as it's covering a similar time period, but it gives us a different perspective on what is going on in Europe at this time, focusing mainly on the ideas of imperialism and colonialism and looking at actually Spain conquering this new world and what they discovered when they arrived there and what the impact of that has been on these areas. So we look particularly at the reasons for Spanish exploration, what they found when they arrived there, what did they do when they were there? What was the impact of this on these lands and these peoples? OK, focusing on Columbus, looking at, again at other conquistadors such as Balboa, the conquest of Cuba, uh, the conquest of Mexico. And again, the actions and consequences of these uh, these individuals for the Aztecs and the Incas, some ancient civilizations you may have heard of. OK, so we're really looking at the expansion of empire and this 
growth of colonialism at this time and it's really useful especially when we're looking at it nowadays because of the impact it's had on society to this day it's a fascinating topic one that we are really really enjoying and hopefully you guys will enjoy it too the final topic of study is Weimar and Nazi Germany 1918 to 1939. The topic starts at the end of World War I and Germany's reaction to defeat and the creation of the Weimar Republic. We look at the challenges this new democratic government faced and the attempts of recovery in the years 1924 to 29. We go on to study Hitler's rise to power and the development and organisation of the Nazi party and the growth of Nazi support. We examine the Nazi dictatorship and the creation of a police state, looking at the methods of control through fear and propaganda within law, education and youth organisations such as the Hitler Youth. We look at Nazi opposition and resistance movements. Finally, we finish with a study of life in Nazi Germany for ordinary people and the persecution of ethnic minorities, most prominently the Jewish community. The Weimar and Nazi Germany paper includes the study of interpretations. It is a very interesting topic to study and we're certain you'll find it most intriguing. Hello, I'm Maddie Stevens and I'm here to tell you why I think you should study history. Um, I am a King's Head alumni of history and it probably was one of my favourite subjects that I studied. Um, I'm currently at Warwick University studying politics um, and I can say that studying history at not only GCSE and A-level helped numerously in to be able to do my politics degree. Um, so many different um, aspects of history overlap with politics and I think it's been really crucial as to why I enjoy the subject so much and, I, and I'm so good at it. Um, the teachers, as, as you know, are excellent they helped me fall in love with the subject even more than I possibly thought I could. Um, I got there into A-level not really knowing what to expect, but they helped leaps and bounds with helping me improve my writing skills, my analytical skills. They just, they, they made the subject fun and yeah, I couldn't, couldn't recommend it enough. It was, it was one of the best two years of my life studying history um, with Miss Bailey, Miss Masters and Miss Medhas and I know me and all of my other peers could not recommend studying history enough for students at Kim's Head Academy. Thank you. My favourite thing about history is learning about the Tudors. I find it so interesting to learn about how they lived and what their society looked like. And with taking history, I can get an understanding and reasons for why they passed certain laws. And overall, I can create my own judgment.